there has always been an uncertainty between sedition and freedom of speech and expression and in this video we will discuss about it hello everyone my name is satyan shivaj and i am an intern at lexis and company section 124a sedition states whoever by words either spoken or written or by sign or by visible representation or otherwise brings or attempts to bring into hatred or contempt or excites or attempts to excite disaffection towards the government established by law in India sedition law or section 124a was inserted into the ipc in 1870 the colonial law was derived from british sedition act of 1661 described as an act for safety and preservation of his majesty's person and government against treasonable and seditious practice and attempt even as it continued its controversial existence in the indian statute books it was abolished in great britain in 2009 it was put in ipc to protect the elected government from attempt from attempt to overthrow the government with violence and illegal means the continued existence of the government established by law is an essential condition of the stability of the state mahatma gandhi called section 124a the prince among the political section of the ipc designed to suppress the liberty of the citizen supreme court on 31st may in its order said it is time to define the limits of sedition the facts of the case are as follows during the program mr r k raju member of parliament is alleged to have expressed views critical of the state government and chief minister besides mr raju who have been named as the first accused tv5 and abn has been named the second and third in this case supreme court said the indiscriminate use of the sedition law against critics journalists social media users activists and citizens from for airing grievances about the government's covid-19 management or even for seeking help to gain medical access equipments drugs and oxygen cylinders This is muzzling the media and an assault on freedom of speech and expression under article 191A of the constitution. This said about the manner in which the state had tried to silence channel TV5 and ABN by registering an FIR on 14 May under the provision of sector, section 124A 153 505 read with section 120B of the Indian Penal Code. The court also acknowledged the argument that the media was well within its right to air critical programs about a prevailing regime without attracting sedition <coughs> supreme court in order also stated that having heard from learned counsel we are of the view that the emit and parameter of provision of section 124a 153a and 505 of indian penal code would require interpretation particularly in the context of the right of the electronic and print media to communicate news information and rights even those even the, those that may be critical of the prevailing regime in any part of the nation people of our nation have been facing sedition charges and restriction on the freedom of speech and expression the supreme court has constitutionalized and limited the scope of sedition in kedarnath singh versus state of bihar by restricting it to instances where individual through their speech and expression disrupt the law or provoke the incite violence However, in practice and past trend showcases that despite the existence of this stipulation, sedition charges are levied on individual for mere criticism of the government in public arena, mere expression of detest and abhorrence for state policies, religion and showcasing contempt against what it is morally acceptable in our society. Thus, prevailing present day practices are not in accordance with the judicial intention at the time of articulation of kedarna judgment based on this premise in the following grounds certain reason provided by sedition law should be repealed from indian state nation and in indian express versus union of india supreme court stated that the court has a duty to uphold the freedom of press and invalidate all laws and administrative action that breach that freedom and it was realized that freedom of press has been uh, having three essential element freedom of access to all sorts of information freedom of publication freedom of circulation at last i would like to conclude with a point that freedom of speech and expression 
should only be restricted reasonably and government should not misuse the power of sedition thank you